Good afternoon, students. The time now is for CRS. And the topic we want to consider is the growth of the Christian church in Nigeria. We want to know how the Christian church came to Nigeria and we want to know the people that brought the gospel to us. In the 1915 or in the 15th century, some Europeans came to Nigeria with the gospel message. They brought the gospel to us because originally what we had was African traditional religion. And these people came to bring the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to us. When they came, they first of all met with our chiefs. They settled in places like Benin and the Wari in the West. These our chiefs, because the, the, the Europeans were majorly traders, the chiefs were more much more interested in the trading than in listening to the gospel message they came with. As a result of this, they were not able to establish Christianity. More so, because of the hot climate we have here, and because of diseases like malaria, they were not able to establish the Christian communities among us. They left. But after 300 years, another group came back. But this time around, there was success. Why? Because it was brought by Nigerians themselves, but not Nigerians who have been here, but Nigerians who were formerly slaves. These people, because they have heard the gospel message over there, when they were released, they decided to bring back the Christian message to their people. These things, these things were possible because there was a man who rose and met the English parliament and asked them to fight against slave trade. The name of that man was William Weberforce. When he was listened to, and it was granted, these people were released. Some of them had married, had given birth to many children, and they were deported to Freetown. From there, some of them decided to come back to Nigeria. Some of them decided to remain there. Among these people that came back to Nigeria, not that they were all that missionaries, they were traders looking for what to eat, trading, doing their businesses. But because they had had the gospel message over there, they saw it good to let their people, the Nigerians, know what they have. So they, they started missionary work over there at Lagos. At a time, they saw that they were not all that competent to continue with it. Some of them sent back messages to the European missionaries they knew before coming back to Nigeria. And some of them responded. Later, the Christian free slaves who were Yorubas, they came back and they started missionary work. We, with their trade, they formed companies and traveled to Lagos and Badagri. As they were trading, they were communicating the gospel message to people. They do their business. They communicate the gospel message. With that, they were able to gain ground. And before you know it, other free slaves came back from Freetown and helped to establish the Christianity in Nigeria. Those who were members of Methodists over there, 
sent message to one man called Thomas Birch Freeman and they graft from the Gold Coast. The Gold Coast now is known as Ghana. And they came and helped them. They established Methodist Church. And from there, other denominations started sending their people. The first Nigerians to become Christians were, they were either free slaves or the children of these free slaves. I told us earlier that these people, even though they were slaves, they were opportuned to marry and they had their children. So when they were released, they also were released with their children, with their family. So all of them came back. Any man that was going went with his, his wife and with his children. And when they settled in Nigeria, they continued their business. And as they were doing the business trading, they were communicating the gospel message to Nigerians. And these missionaries, when they came, they helped these, our Nigerians who were slaves, who were formerly slaves, they helped them to go to other places other than Benin, Wari, Badagri, and Lagos main cities to communicate the gospel. One of these freed slaves is a man called Samuel Ajay Crowder. You may have heard of this man even in your primary schools. Ajay Crowder. He was a Yoruba. And as I told us before that many of these people were Yorubas and they came back to Nigeria. He was a Yoruba by origin and this man, Samuel Ajay Crowder, became the first African ordained in the Anglican communion. Even though that time it wasn't known as Anglican communion, it was known as CMS. And that is why even in Nigeria today, if you meet elderly people, like people who are like 80 years, 90 years above, they still refer to Anglican Church. They still call Anglican Church CMS. We'll get to know what CMS is all about. And he became the first bishop of the Niger Diocese and the first West African to become an Anglican bishop. Before the coming of these missionaries, I told us earlier that Nigeria originally, originally didn't know anything about Christianity. Our religion before was African traditional religion. So their practices were so evil, they killed twins, they killed their mothers. To them, those years, if you, if a woman gave birth to twins, it was a taboo. It was an abomination. They didn't see it as God's blessing. They said it was a taboo. And so the twins must be killed. The woman will be banished or killed also. So not only that, some part of Nigerians were practicing cannibalism. They were eating human flesh as meat. And they, they didn't say anything wrong in doing that anyway. So when one of the missionaries who came to Nigeria and saw how Nigerians in those days killed twins and their mothers was a woman known as Mary Slesso. Mary Slesso. This woman, she worked mainly in Calabar. She is the one that vehemently fought against the killings of twins here in Nigeria. Many other churches, like the Presbyterian Church that came from Scotland, they brought their own missionaries. In fact, every denomination that make up the churches in Nigeria, came, they came with their own missionaries and they were like going places, from places to places, establishing their own denominations. And that is why, even in Nigeria today, when you look at some parts, it will be as if a particular denomination is rampant there, more than every other place. 
There are other missionaries, other churches that sent their own missionaries to Nigeria, which includes the Roman Catholic. The Roman Catholic Church, church sent their own missionaries, the Anglican Church, the Methodist Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Sudan Interior Missions, the Assemblies of God Mission, the Salvation Army, and even the Kwaibo Church. I know some of you may not know this Kwaibo Church because it is, there are not many here. But if you go to places like the Kogi, the Lorraine, that's Kwara State, you will see them much then. Most missionaries who came to Nigeria were sent by mission boards or mission societies. Remember, I told you that the European missionaries came before, but they did not succeed because of three reasons. Our chiefs were much more interested in trading than the gospel message. Two, the hot climate here in Nigeria did not allow them to stay. And three, diseases like, like malaria did not allow them. So when they went back and these, our people, the slaves, the former slaves came, they still had to send message to them to come and help them to propagate the gospel message here. So most of them were sent by mission boards and societies that supported them right from their home countries while they worked here in Nigeria. So all the, all the activities they carried out in all these churches, they were supported. Money were being sent to them, things like clothing, like what they used to, 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 to help others, to help people here in Nigeria, like medical treatment that they gave to our people, were all brought to them, sent to them by their people. The Church Missionary Society were sent by the Anglicans. The Church Missionary Society is what I referred to before as CMS, Church Missionary Societies. It belongs to the Anglican Communion. Then the Basel Mission or the Evangelical Missionary Society send their own people. The Methodist Missionary Society also send their own people, the Baptist Missionary Society, and the London Missionary Society. All these were sent by mission boards or missionary societies, and they came to Nigeria. The first set of people to come here were the Roman Catholic Missionary Fathers. They worked here from Dahoni, their first station was at Lagos. They stayed there and from there they took off to every other part of the, of the nation. The first Roman Catholic priest to settle in Nigeria was Father Pere Bosch. Later, he, the, 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 the Father Lutz worked at Onisha. He worked mainly at Onisha land. It, it's as if they shared where each person who go and do the missionary work because they they couldn't have stayed just in one place since they they brought the gospel message to every every tribe every every ethnic group here in Nigeria. So these people, Father Lut worked at Onisha. Why Bishop Sonahan, a Holy Ghost Father from Ireland, worked mainly in Igbo land? When we say Igbo land, Onisha is still inclusive. All the part of Igbo land then, now we have like five states making up the Igbo land. Anambra states, Enugu, Abia, Eboin state, and Imo state. So he worked mainly in Igbo land. And the Roman Catholic missionary societies included the Lion Society of the African Missions, the White Fathers, the Holy Ghost Fathers, and the White Sisters. And that is why even in the Roman Catholic Church today, they still use these Reverend Sisters. You have heard about Reverend Sisters. They work hand in hand to make sure that they establish churches in other places. Now, I want us to see some other 
some other people that came and brought the gospel message to us. I don't know whether your mom or your dad has told you a story how your own denomination, I mean, that church, remember that it is denominations that make up churches here in Nigeria. Whether your mom or your dad or even your priest or your pastor or an elderly person has told you how your own particular denomination came to your community. Have you ever tried to ask that question? Mom, dad, how did this my church, how did it come to this our community? You will see that your mom will tell you stories or your dad will tell you how, through whom. Because you won't tell me that this, your denomination just came from heaven and is there in your community. No. Something happened. Maybe through one person or two persons who traveled. And when they came out, they said, ah, it is good though. We want this, our church here. And before you know what was going on, two persons will agree. Oh, let us invite so 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 person. Let us invite so 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 person. And that church is established in your community. I want to leave two assignments for us here. In these two assignments, there is what I want you to do. Number one assignment, I want you to make further research or from what I have taught you now, tell us why Christianity failed in Nigeria. It needs first attempt. Why Christianity failed in Nigeria in its first attempt. Then number two, I want you to either ask your mom or your dad or even your priest, your priest or an elderly person, ask him or her that your particular denomination, how did it come to your community? How did it come to your community? Make this research. Make a research on how your denomination came to your community. Do these two assignments. Write out why Christianity failed in Nigeria in its first attempts. Secondly, make a research on how your own denomination came to your community. Next time, we will still continue with the growth of the church, but we are going to differentiate them under denominations. Under denominations. And by that time, you will even know the denomination you belong because some of us don't even know the denomination we belong to. They say church, 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 church. We will group them. Then you will know where you belong. Thanks.